Welcome to the third video in our collaboration series with Richard Raffin, Sam Angelo, and Tomislav Tomasic. Uh, this week, we're going to, uh, this month, we're going to turn something out of a cube of wood approximately six inches square. I'm not going to tell you what I'm turning until maybe halfway through, so keep watching. First thing we're going to do is going to mark center, and I started to use a ruler to do that, but I didn't, I don't think I got it uh, centered, so I'm using my little round template where I can actually place this here and look at uh, pretty much each side and get it equally divisible, and I think I'm going to get, get my best results with this. Now, one side's got a few checks on it, and that's the side I'm going to use to, to chuck up because those checks will get turned away based on my project design. The wood was dry, but when I got cut somehow into a cube, it started checking on me. Okay, got it between the centers. Everything is secured. Lathe is on. I'm going to rough it round. It's a pretty good sized block of wood, so I'm not going to get it up past uh, close to a thousand while I'm rough, roughing it. This is very dry cherry. Got most of the edges knocked off. I can speed it up a little bit. No, oh, about 1400. I feel I'm almost there. Okay, it's round. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a chuck tenon on it. I'm going to use uh, some bowl jaws with a uh, dovetail set of jaws. I'm going to use my beating and parting tool to, to rough it down. Let me get a rough idea about how where that where I'm going. Okay, that's about right. Okay. Take the tool, ride the bevel. Actually, I'm going to come in straight until I slice the fibers. I'm going to drop the handle, take feeling cut. Then, I, as I get close, I'm going to turn it up on the side, get a little bit of a little bit of a dovetail here. see I was cutting on this side so when somebody says how many sides uh, do you sharpen on this there's actually four this side this side and then you're gonna uh, stroke each side here so you get a nice sharp edge here when you come down to make that dovetail I'm just putting these here for reference and that's about where I want to get down to all right I'm going to shape this down from the left hand side down to the right all right, I'm going to uh, do the initial shaping with a half-inch spindle gouge. This is a PNN gouge made in Australia. They don't, uh, that company doesn't manufacture wood turning tools anymore. This was kind of an unusual fluke design in that it's it it's not as flat. It's it's a little deeper than the typical uh, spindle gouge, almost almost like a bowl gouge. So it's almost a crossover, you might say. I'm going to come back on this end, anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle to the cut. I'm going to get a uniform taper here. Actually, I'm going to bring this taper down just a little bit. I might use a skew to get a, a, a better cut. I'm going to raise the tool rest for this planing cut. And I've got a big 1 and 3 8 inch Allen Lacer skew that's too big for most of the stuff that I do, but it'll work great for this. Anchor the tool. Ride the bevel, rotate it until it cuts. Take it 
take one more pass, take it down a little bit, a little bit smaller. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle so it cuts. Unlike some turners, I don't like to touch the wood while it's spinning to see how smooth it is. get here on the end. I want to round over this a little bit, um, not so much that it'll interfere with that, that chuck, but just round over that edge. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle to the cut, run it around. Alright, now I'm going to put it in the chuck. And make it a, uh, you always make it tenon and appropriate for your particular chuck jaws. In this case, these are not my normal Techno tool jaws that use a parallel. This one actually uses a dovetail. All right, so turn in there, turn in there. Okay, now I'm going to start hollowing it out. Before I do that, I think I might uh, go ahead and face it, face it off. I'm going to come in here and make a. It's off just a little bit. And just make a slicing entry cut here. I'm going to get a little bit of vibration. Hanging off the rest, uh, hanging off the chuck away. It looks even all the way around, except for right there. I'll just take a pull cut here. Now I think I'm just going to nip that corner just a little bit. Now I'm going to hollow this out. First thing, I'm going to uh, go ahead and make a little divot here. beating and boarding tool. Alright, I'm going to mark a line about 15 mil from the face of the jaw chucks. That's as deep as I want to hollow. Right about there. Most of the time I use a hand drill, a short hand drill, because it's convenient to mark a depth. That's not deep enough. So I use a larger one, one that I actually started with, but I found it didn't need, normally need to be that big. I put this handle on it to make it a little easier to kind of control, and I've got this little washer here so I can I can measure how deep I want to go and and mark it. I'm going to slow the speed down. I don't need to be going super fast to drill a hole. It's below 900. Actually, it was probably a wasted effort because I think the thing that would make more sense is to drill a, a hole with this uh, one inch drill bit. So I'm going to do that. I've kind of forgotten about this. So I'm just going to mark it there. I'm going to mark it there. And that'll let me know when I'm close. This is Mount. Got a Morse taper. I'm going to be very careful not to put my fingers anywhere near the flute. They're going to be back here. All right. This is end grain, so I'm going to start hauling with a spindle gouge and see how far I go. I'll probably, I'm sure I'll have to switch to another another tool for long. Go ahead and get the speed back up a little bit. In this case, 
maybe 1200. I'm just going to come in with it at about uh, oh, 10 o'clock and just kind of sweep it open. be able to go all the way to the bottom. I don't like to hollow with a spindle gouge, my steeper in about uh, three inches, I'm about there. Okay, I've switched to a box uh, tool rest and I'm going to use a square edge scraper. Just coming, picking up the edge. I'm bumping into the tool rest, so let me slide the headstock back. the advantages of a sliding headstock it gives you some room sometimes when you need it. Speed not much more than a thousand. And to come in there and just get that in. I'm going to readjust that tool rest. so much more pleasant had I had a, a big block of green wood instead of this very dry cherry. <laughs> okay, I probably should have resorted to this earlier, but I got to go ahead and set up this hollowing gear. I've got a laser on it. When it goes off the edge, I know it's, uh, know it's the right depth. And I've only got another inch or two, but I'm just too far to get over there with a stretch, uh, with a, uh, with a scraper. So, here we go. This is effortless. First hollowing tip I use is this high speed steel 3 16 of an inch tip on a straight bar. Then I switch to a swan neck with also with a 3 16 inch cutter. Then I switch to this high speed steel uh, scraper to smooth the walls. And I sand inside and out through the various grits. I use a foam pad uh, to reduce the heat and give it even pressure. And then I use a, a paste sanding uh, abrasive, uh, it, like Yorkshire grit, this homemade version, Axe, there's lots of them out there. Uh, rub a liberal coat of it on there. inside and out and that will like triple your last grit in, a, in effect this is a very fine abrasive turn it over to clean side maybe turn the speed up okay I know some of y'all are dying to try to figure out what is this because it's an ugly looking hollow form you're, you're saying okay I'm telling you the big reveal, it's going to be a megaphone for my speaker for playing music. I'm going to cut slots in here uh, and finish off, off the back. I'll be able to drop this in and increase the sound volume. I could put this in a, a bandsaw jig that, uh, that I made, but uh, I think I'm just going to use this Japanese uh, pull saw and do that. I'm, I'm kind of guesstimating what the angle is going to be, so let's hope I get it right. I've got. To, I've looked at the grain alignment to figure out what would look nice on top. So I've got a cathedral pattern on top of lighter colored wood. I've measured the very back, so I'm going to cut right in front of the back, and I'm going to just. I think I'll use the spindle lock if I can figure out how to get it. 
got a couple of possibilities. And I think the easiest one is to put it on the spindle lock, take this out of the chuck, and, and rotate it until I get my saw on top. I've scratched the surface, literally, so I know where the saw needs to be. Secure it. Okay. Start with a small, small blade first, and just angle it about like that. Now I'm going to switch to the more aggressive side. Okay, I think that's about the right depth. I'd rather cut more than and have it cut too far. Next trick is I need to uh, measure the depth of my phone and mark that cut. I think I'm just going to do that with pencil. I think it's going to be close enough. You know, my, my, my phone has a case on it, and that's okay. So I'm going to tilt it at about the angle. I think I've got the saw cut. Cut right there. And I think that'll do it. I don't want a sloppy fit, but I don't want to have to force it in either. Alright, so again, using the fine tip tooth. And then I want to try to get this parallel to the cut to the other one. And now let's get more aggressive. Let's just kind of glance around. I'm sure there's more scientific ways to do this, but I think this will work. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm just going to chisel it out. Let's kind of see how even that thing is. A little bit, a little bit off here, but I can I could sand that if I have to. All right, so now how's the best way to cut that out? I don't know. I think maybe I could probably do some drilling, but I think I'm just going to get a chisel and whack on it. All right, got my mallet, got a chisel. I'm going to start. You know, I want to keep it in line with the grain, and if I have to do a little hand work, so be it. Come straight in. All right, got it cut on that side. Turn it around. I'm just going to turn it up. Well, I'm just going to leave it loose and come in here and whack it on, whack it on this side. Now there's a rough slot. Now I can start playing with the phone a little bit to see how close I think I am, how much sanding it's going to, how much hand work it's going to take. And that's just about right. Oh, well, it's slipping a little bit. But when I get this even on each side, I think it's going to be fine. All right. So I'll do a little cleanup work here. I'm just going to get a square uh, scrap of wood that fits in there, put sandpaper on it, and just let, uh, sand the bottom of that nice and nice and smooth and flat on each side. Okay, now I've got to figure out how to chuck it to remove the, the uh, tenon. Normally I'd use a backup chuck, but wait a minute, I cut a hole in the side, so that's not going to work. So we're just going to make a, a little friction chuck. So I'm going to take this soft maple dowel that I had, cylinder that I had sitting out. We're just going to round over the end, and I think it'll probably wedge in there just, just fine. So we'll just round this over using a uh, 3 8 inch spindle.
spindle gouge. I already roughly uh, felt to see if it would fit. Where'd it go? Okay. Gonna test this hypothesis out here. Yep, it'll clear it. Uh, and it comes down to just about where that slot is. It tapers a little bit more, so I think if I just taper it, taper it down just a little bit on the end, it'll fit fairly snugly. So let's just let's just do that. we're getting. Okay, that's uh, that's fitting pretty pretty close. Uh, I could probably put some, I almost took too much of it off. Uh, I think I want to wrap some tape to keep it bouncing off of this end in case it does come loose. Keep it from getting scratched. Then we're going to bring up the tail stock. I'm going to use a, with the cone center. Probably doesn't make any difference, but I can get a little closer as I work it down to a nub. That centers it pretty well, and it's if, if it's not snug, I'll tell you what, it probably could be if I put a couple of pieces of tape around here. So, Or, let me see if a rubber pad slipped in there will do the trick. I'm just going to use a small piece of shelf liner and see, see what that does. And I think that'll work out real, real well. That keeps it fairly snug, so I don't think it's going to come flying off the lathe if I go through because I don't think it's going to break that either so all right so we're just going to round this over I'll probably I might make a little decorative feature out of it and, and not take it all off so we'll see it's running running fairly true I like that so I think I'm going to start with just get rid of any chuck mounting damage here first Instead of removing the whole thing, I'm just going to leave it as a design feature. I'm going to round over this edge. And then round over this edge. Down to the point where I'm below that uh, damage in the live center. Get that a little bit, a little bit smoother. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, rotate it until it cuts. Come back here. Before I completely remove that, I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding the end. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, I've got it sanded. Now I'm going to use my detail gouge to kind of waste this away. Just a little nubbin. Got to get speed back up from sanding a little bit. Oh, 1200 or so. Or do I want to saw this off? And I think I want to saw it off. I got my flush cut saw. I'm going to go ahead and back off tail stock and just. Just trim off this little nub and that'd be easy enough to power sand. There we go. Okay, so I got sanded, I got it uh, nub and cut off. I'll power sand that uh, on the lay, but uh, that, that'll be quick. So you, you figure out how do we keep this thing from rolling? Well, there's a couple of ways. I could drill some small holes and put a couple of little, maybe ebony or dark, dark feet or maybe matching cherry, whatever. 
Uh, or I made this thing thick enough in the back intentionally with the idea it's so oh gosh it's good three quarters of an inch thick in, in the, at, the, at the very very bottom back here with the idea that I could sand this thing flat and it would rest there and keep from rolling and I think that's the approach that I'm going to use. So I'm going to take this over to the belt sander and sand it flat. And this is the fastest way to sand the bottom. Another great use of a collet chuck to hold your quarter inch uh, mandrel. I use these sanding, uh, uh, these Rolox sanding uh, mandrels and, and my sanding supplies from Woodturner's Wonders. There'll be a link in the show notes. And by the way, I'm an affiliate uh, marketer with them, so if you buy something using the link uh, in the show notes, I'll get a small commission. Okay, when I take this and set it down, I can see the only place I'm going to have contact is the very back, so I don't have to go too far to make that flat. I'm going to stick this board in there to keep to help me keep this thing uh, in, in proper proper alignment as I flatten that, that spot in the back. So let's get started. That's a little tipsy-turvy, so I think I'll reevaluate my design a little bit. Okay, I had a hard time balancing it by just sanding it off, so I added a couple of walnut uh, feet. Now it fits like a three-legged stool. There's the phone. Let's check it out. I'm playing the Ukrainian national anthem because almost any other music would give me a copyright strike. With the megaphone, without the megaphone. With the megaphone, without the megaphone. I hope you enjoyed my version of uh, turning something from a cube. Check out the other four ways uh, collaboration videos from Tomislav Tomasesh from, uh, from Croatia, Richard Raffin from Australia, and Sam Angelo from uh, Billings, Montana. I'll have the links. Uh, I'll have the links here and also on the show notes. Remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here. <laughs>